<laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I can stretch my leg. Joyce McCarthy. 
I am cosplaying Batwoman today. Hi, I am Miriam, and I am cosplaying Catwoman. Hello, everyone. I am cosplaying Etta Candy. And if you don't know who that is, it's Wonder Woman's best friend. Yes. <laughs> She just got a bazooka and she was like, 
she does not have any hang-ups about Wonder Woman being Wonder Woman. She's just like, that's cool, let's go fight. You know what I mean? And then the other thing too that I love about Etta is that she's just straight up Etta. Like her, her catchphrase in the comics is for the love of chocolate. <laughs> straight up. Yeah. So she'll go, woohoo, with another chocolate. That's so fun. And I'm like, I love this girl so much. Like, I love it. But like, I mean, there's, I wish there was more sources for Etta Candy. So that's why I'm really glad that graphic novel that came out. I think it was great. Um, not only to show like she's human and the fact that she's just there and that alone is strong enough You know, I mean, I hope every I hope every one of you has at least one person in your life that You can always count on no matter what like if you're doing good. They're there for you They're not there to be jealous. They're not there to bring you down, but they're like I got you man I got you and that's what it is for me, you know, and just kind of like just to jump in a little bit um, One of the girls mentioned about oh, sorry you know, about like seeing this person for like a mere minute and falling in love with them instantly. That was for me, of course, for Etta in the movie, right? And I'm like, who's this lady? I wanna know. Same thing happened for Electra. Same thing <laughs> Oh God, I'm not gonna talk about Electra. <laughs> <laughs> but that was, that's why I found Sean. Um, I kind of touched on this already, that Hawkeye didn't have any superpowers. She's you really good at one thing, but um, I think he is, motivated by the relationships that he's built uh, with his team members, and I think he does have a little bit of something to prove in the regard that he doesn't have any superpowers, and like he says in multiple comics, I'm just a dude with a bow. Like, that's a straight quote that he has, um, and he, he does have some issues where he talks about, like, it's not just that he doesn't want to ever miss a target, it's that he can't does, then he's going to be seen as less by his teammates who are super soldiers and geniuses and gods and all of these things. And I think as a woman, that's pretty relatable to have, you know, like to feel like, you know, maybe you have something to prove in, in some scenarios. And so I think that's why I like him. But the cool thing about Hawkeye is that he steps up. Yeah. When stuff goes sure. down, he's going to step up. There, what was that? Weird, crazy alien dragon thing in the air. He's like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm gonna shoot an arrow at it. Why not? Like, like what would I do? I run. This, this might do something. Great. <laughs> but it's right, benefits doesn't. I tried. Yeah. So. I would run. That's so the best I can do. Yeah. 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 Which is, I mean, ultimately born from pain and trauma. Um, I think Jessica, yeah, you, like you said, you kind of have a superpower. She does. She does have a superpower, but in a lot of ways, we don't really think of her as a superpower character because she is very human in so many ways. She's a very gritty character. She has a lot of problems, you know? She also doesn't seem to use that power unless really pushed. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, a huge part of, I think, what motivates her to do what she does is, is anger at, I mean, is revenge, which ties into anger, but also, I mean, just anger at injustice, and, and when she sees situations that, you know, are, for want of a better word, you know, sort of triggering to her that are, that evoke experiences that she's had, which a lot of us has, have had as women, um, you know, it, it, it really motivates her to, you know, kick some butt. She, she's angry, you know? She's an angry person, and it doesn't always manifest itself in good and healthy ways, but she can, she does have the ability to channel those sort of bad feelings into something productive, in pursuit of justice, which is pretty cool. Captain Marvel. Um, Carol from the movie, at least, feels to me a lot more like a PG version of Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> she's got that sarcasm, she's got that anger, she's got that deep inherent desire to do what's right. She wants the world to be a good place, even though it's not. Just like for her friends, for her friend's daughter, for the people that she was 
raised to believe were bad guys and suddenly found out they weren't, like her whole world was turned on its head and her motivation is just to make things right, to make, you know, all people be treated, you know, equally with the respect that they deserve. And I, I really relate to that. I love Carol for everything she stands for, for the sarcastic, take no bull attitude. Um, she's just, she's so wholesomely herself, even though she doesn't know who that is just yet. I'm gonna add a little thing, okay. um, just to Jessica Jones a little bit. I know there's a bunch of kids in here, so I don't think you guys watch Jessica Jones. I hope not. But <laughs> it's on Netflix. They've it's watched on Netflix. it. <laughs> but the one thing I do uh, like respect about Jessica Jones' character is that her previous, her initial identity was a sparkle. What was it? It was a very bright, shiny thing. I forgot the character. But like her, her initial identity, personality was that superhero that's like. Rainbows and sparkles and jewels. Jewels. Yeah, it's just jewels. It's just jewels. Maybe it's because it's just jewels. But like, it was happy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Like it was just a very happy. I mean, something horrible happened to her. Yeah. And then she has to fight through that through her anger. And I respect that. There's something really interesting about the fact that once she's experienced trauma and once she's she's become this person who's fueled by her anger and her pain. That's when she chooses to use herself as her identity, you know? To not be a costume superhero. Yeah. She's not stopping what she's doing. She's still going out in the world and she's fighting for what's right. I mean, and sometimes she's yeah. fighting for money. How many times have we like had to like literally break apart our initial personality? You know, yeah. like from high school, from college, something happened. We, you know, we all meet so many different people, different types of life, different experiences, unexpected, expected. And what you thought you were, what you thought you were going to become is no longer there. So a lot of us have become angry. A lot of us are still processing that. And that's, it's, it's okay to acknowledge that you're angry. It's okay to know that you can do this. Jessica did it. She found like her her power, her thing was about anger, and then she worked through that as the show progressed. Yeah, and through the comic, and and and, and, kept, and Captain Marvel too. Well, I mean, the minute she found out, like in the movie, I mean, hell, she was pissed off like that. Okay, you know and as long as you're on a roll. Yeah, <laughs> and also she has the cat. So we'll, we'll, we'll start with you. Chewie, I should add. Is, was it Chewie? Captain, uh, see, um, yeah, in the, in, yeah, in the comic books, her yeah. cat's name was Chewie. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's so cute. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, no problem. Um, so what is it? What are Edda's weaknesses? Ah, chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's a universal one. <laughs> um, you know, that's a very interesting question. Edda, because Edda isn't really like completely fully developed, she doesn't have like a weakness other than her being human. Mm -hmm. So she can't just like fly next to Wonder Woman or do whatever or whatnot. But I guess her weakness is that the fact that she's just human at the moment. You know, we're not a comic world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and also the fact that she she's just stuck in that one timeline. Because Ed is in the 50s in the comic books. And in the movie, you know, she's current time. So mortality is pretty much her weakness. That's the weakness. Um, Mommy Bird, what are your weaknesses? <laughs> uh, besides these bangle bracelets that announce my presence everywhere? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, the character would say that her weakness is men. <laughs> because she has had it we been married, she's had boyfriends, and she thinks that they're all great when they meet, and then they just kind of flitter off into stupidity, no offense to hot guys. <laughs> <laughs> <He knows. laughs> um, but I think she also has the human aspect as well, you know, um, she's very trusting. Um, and that sometimes has done her wrong, but yeah, I would say men is me. And do you consider her a hero or a villain? Well, considering I love playing villains, this one's definitely a hero. Um, she, yeah. Um, in the comic book that this is from, she's on a cruise. It is a nerd cruise. That is what it's called. To get intel, she she dives into a D and D game. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> okay. 
it's, it's, yeah, I'm going to have to walk it to you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she does, it, um, she'll break a few rules to get what needs to be done, but really, you know, she's there to do right, to, to solve crimes, to, you know, fight for justice and be a big nerd along the way. Yes. yes. So. <laughs> Okay, Catwoman. Weaknesses. <laughs> Weaknesses. Other than Bruce Wayne. <laughs> These are they're each other's weaknesses, actually. But but for Catwoman, I think she's so broken. She's so broken that she's not able to accept what Bruce is trying to give her, which is which is um, someone that cares for her. And she doesn't see it. She sees it as you know, you're just you just have pity for me, and I don't want your pity. I don't want you know this this thing that you're giving me because she she's never had that. She doesn't have anyone in her life that she cares about except for her cats. And uh, and and so, um, but for Catwoman not being able to accept that, I think that's a huge weakness because that's part of being human and being able to accept that you are loved by someone else other than yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and being able, and really having, having that reciprocal relationship, you know, you relate to someone else other than, than yourself, you're not being selfish. You're not being uh, narcissistic in that way. And I think that's her weakness. Mm -hmm. Okay, weaknesses. <laughs> well, as I said, no. <laughs> um, it, 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 they unfortunately never touched on this in uh, movies, but in the comics, um, it's not really a weakness, but he sees it as a weakness that he has to overcome because he does go deaf at some point. Um, he is mostly, I think, so he ends up using hearing aids at a point, but it is a setback for him, um, and that like imperfection when he's already not a super human really messes with him. He gets super depressed, um, and so he he has to really struggle to overcome that and still be a hero despite you know having a flaw um, that's not just like. An emotional flaw, but she has lots of those too. But um, having a physical disability is a is a huge setback for him that he does overcome and he does work with and live with. So. After your abilities, what are her weak points? No weak points, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel for the for almost the entirety of Endgame because the movie would have been over too quickly. Thank you. Her weakness really is that that like lack of knowledge about anything. <laughs> 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 Falling off the stage, many. <laughs> It, it's really that lack of knowledge about her past that for most of the movie her weakness is the fact that she doesn't know or understand her true power like her, her weakness is how much power she has and that she just doesn't know it like she needs to find out how to control it she needs to find out how much is too much and like how to keep her friends and everyone safe when she's still figuring this out and there are people after her. Like, that's that's really the main plot that we followed in the most recent movie is just like, her figuring out that she has no weaknesses. I will take no <laughs> Thank you. Uh, woman, weaknesses? <laughs> Well, there's the kind of fit into his basket. That's one. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to fill the shoes, you know, yeah. when, when cousin's away. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've watched a couple of them. I, I see and she, think she has some problems with her family and the fact that yeah, they're trying so. to I can protect Gotham, too, but not in the right <laughs> way. Right, right. 
And a chip on her shoulder, she's got it, you know, she's got another chip that needs to do that with her. Anybody who has to follow a legacy is going to yeah. have a huge chip on their shoulder. She feels no. left out, I think. Yeah. Normal families have interesting Thanksgivings. <laughs> if you're a superhero family, yeah. it's, yeah. Umbrella <laughs> cannot. <laughs> say one more thing? Sure. A lot of our characters have the same issue in that, you know, their weakness is that they're women and no one takes them seriously because of that. No one believes that, you know, Carol has the power that she does because That's she's just true. a woman. And nobody believes Hawkeye because he's just there. <laughs> <laughs> he's always just there. He's just shooting arrows at big aliens and, you know, This is Dr. Manhattan for several reasons. Uh, <laughs> none of which are true. You can't say it in front of kids. Okay. <laughs> um, but she, I cosplay her because she's a tough FBI agent because I was really pleased with who HBO cast mm -hmm. as Lori Blake oh, because it awesome. was a huge. I thought, okay, so we're going to have some, another, you know. 40 year old, blah, blah, blah. And when 68 year old Gene Smart showed up and really kicked ass, I was very yeah. <laughs> Um And her strengths are that she is able to keep moving past and gone from being the child of vigilantes to be to someone who busts them. <laughs> so. And I'd like to add to your character. After watching the show, I will not accept drinks with lids from anybody I don't know, or law enforcement, <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> just to kind of add to a character, who else is like just really happy when they see like a police character, an FBI character, a fictional, mm -hmm. who's like pretty awesome? And like, I'm re-watching Gargoyles right now, oh, and that lady yeah. cop, oh my god, she was so awesome! Sister Knight is no soft. Oh, <laughs> I cosplayed with Sister Knight yesterday. Yeah. 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 Question. 
when I read a comic book or a character, I'm not necessarily going for it's a, it's a male or female writer. <coughs> to me, I base my love on the content. If it comes off as a great character, it's a great story, that's great. If I love it a lot and I'll look into it, then I kind of take a risk with that. Because there's so much source material from authors that have very questionable, very questionable backgrounds right now. And I think the most hottest issue right now is the J.K. Rowling situation, you know? So it's like, hi, it's, it, it's up to you, you know what I mean? Like, I love Ed Candy, and I will always love Ed Candy, to be honest. But how far deep do I go may or may not change my perception of her at the moment. But that's not what I initially loved her for. I mean, I'm goofy, as you guys can tell. And I, but a lot of the characters I love, they're also dark too. I, it's a whole gamut. And but I, it's, yeah. I think the question for me also stems from throwing a limited amount of shade. <laughs> a limited amount of shade. Yesterday's panel on sex and comics mm -hmm. was led by a group of three straight cisgender white men. <laughs> oh, wow. And the panel about strong female cosplay. Did you guys? I see what you're trying to say. Got it. it. Okay. I, okay. Well, okay. Go ahead and I'll well, start I was just going to add, you know, it, it's. It's interesting that we're doing this panel now because there's been a resurgence of female characters in comics. And part of it is not an error. I mean, part of it is that there was a pretty much a ban on women being played as superheroes or or otherwise, because Catwoman was banned by Comic Advisory Council, who was not an agency that's ruled by any government agency, and basically film and TV if it wasn't approved by them, then they wouldn't put it on air, they, it wouldn't be shown, it wouldn't be portrayed, so young women would only see superheroes that were made. There was nothing that represented minorities, much less any women who are the biggest minority and 50% of the population. So, you know, the resurgence of women characters being portrayed in these, in these uh, powerful, um, uh, dynamic roles, is a little bit biased too, because even that in itself is, gen, you know, they have to be weak. They have to have some weakness in order to, to yes, and that's part of being human. You you prevail from from the oppression. You prevail from the experience of having something negative happen to you, and then you bounce back and you come back back strong. But how many of us women have found that that's true in our everyday life, like? There's been so many things that happen every day that we hear. You know, there was a few panels ago that happened that uh, they talked about the women that are being killed in Mexico, the women that are being raped in the U.S. That is very seldom talked about, and the um, and we only saw it recently where there was like a whole domino effect of the Me Too movement. And so having women in these roles and it portrays us as you know we we can do this. Um, but, but hearing the role as you know not having it be dependent on having a male partner that is a love interest, that is also important because women don't need a man to succeed, and uh, part of it is you know uh, not it's really much it's very much downplayed and and unrecognized. And so then we were talking about the Pathful, mm -hmm. you know, test. The Beckett Be 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 yes. test. Yes, yes. Pathful test. And how that, you know, in film and TV, there's a lot of them that don't pass that test. And I think what you're trying to say is the voices. So if you're trying to say from yesterday that there was a panel of cis Your males, and, and we're also yeah. like females, so I think it comes down to who has the loudest voice. So as we kind of open up these discussions about cosplay women, about writers, uh, women writers, point of case, you know, the more perspective comes out, it comes down to who's going to be the loudest voices and, and, and how we're going to give them the platform to talk. And it also comes down to you guys. Like, you guys are amazing to coming over to listening to us talk. That's one audience that we get to reach out to. If we inspire, if we kind of change the perspective, that's amazing. But it just comes down to voices, to be honest. And you have the power to choose which audience you go to. So granted, there might be somebody who goes to like, you know, the cis male thing, and like, they're gonna go with like one focus, intent, and one perspective. But then when you come to another panel, it's a different one. So it just comes down to which voice are you willing to listen to? 
I mean, I don't know if you guys are really familiar with this. I doubt it, to be honest. But there was a recent debate, a situation that happened with the Romantic Writers Association. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a lot, of the, a lot of the romance writers yes. are female and they're white, right? And that just caused a whole boom. You know what I mean? But that's a voice. And now that we have more opportunities, we have more media, it comes down to you guys and it comes down to us. We are help, We are so happy to share our voices with you guys. But we are so happy that you are listening. And it just ripples effects. So. It, it's not the matter like, oh, um, I, I like this character because a male wrote, wrote it or a female wrote it. It, it came off, it, it may come off from any different directions. It's not supposed to throw shade on anybody. It's just a voice. But what you do with that voice is entirely up to you. That girl has something. That girl. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. I actually am the creator of cosplaying strong women. Yes. Uh, it's a series of panels of, with different characters, sometimes we'll do multiple, you know, genres of characters. The reason, the absolute reason why I came up with this group was because I would go from panel to panel to panel to panel at multiple cons and really never see females represented by, you know, wonderful female uh, cosplayers. And I was thinking, you know what, we really need that group. I'm gonna go ahead and create yeah. this. Yeah, the one source. Yeah. I hope that answered. <laughs> I just um, okay. So going off of, of what you said, whether or not it was if the weakness was because of men in the profession, um, I have a question for all of you. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, raise your hands and keep your hands up because there's a couple, there's a question after it. How many of you read comic books as kids? Okay. Of those, how many of you? Found comic books on your own. Okay. How many of you are given discover comic books because someone else gave it to you? Okay. So sure, you know, I want to know. Uh, right. No, it's okay. Here's what I'm trying to get at. When I was younger, the only reason I came across a comic book was because I had older cousins who were male. Who were male. Yes. And that's why most most women did not read them because it's a boys. It was a boys club. So. The, I, I, you just what, find what, a good one. What's that? I'm sorry. I was, I was she said you just gotta find a good one. Because she said do not walk in the comic shop. So <laughs> yeah, no, oh, that's true. That's yeah. I was gonna say I'm the youngest of eight girls. So. Ooh, nice. <laughs> okay. I have two brothers too, but yeah. oh, there were I didn't get anything from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, okay, you can put the hand in. Okay. Yeah, no, we, we, we yeah, exactly. No, it's not, that's not no. But, but again, just like um, Captain Marvel was written by a woman, as I said before, so in Mockingbird. And it was the male fans who had read all seven episodes before and wasn't reading that she was a feminist the whole time. Because not like she appeared on uh, at eight and was suddenly a feminist. No. Um, they were just saying, oh, gorgeous blonde. Who wears a tight outfit? Okay, I'll read her. Um, and then it wasn't until it was actually they in front reading. of me. They weren't reading. 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 There was a lot of negative connotation to the word, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to the word itself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. we all see feminist ideals in all types of media all the time. And, but you may not realize that's a feminist ideal. Right. And that's interesting that you say that. Because yeah. I have two boys. 20-year-old and a 16-year-old. And my 16-year-old came over to me. Oh, I just tried to You can't do that for a while, you know. I've not been in that for a long time. And, and so my 16-year-old says to me, Mom, are you a feminist? I'm like, hell yeah. He's like, so are you not going to look for a boyfriend? Because I left, you know, their dad or whatever. And, um, and I'm like, I'm sorry, baby, but being a feminist doesn't mean that I hate men. It just means that I am willing to fight for women to have a right to say what they need to say. And I think that's the important thing to teach our children as women. And it's one of the things that I found during, you know, a uh, uh, I'm sorry, it was an ethics class of what we teach our children as women. Don't watch that because that, don't play with that because that's what boys. Don't play with cars. Don't play with you know, toy soldiers. Don't play with guns. Don't play with swords. That's not for you. And the way that we teach our children to be positive and have them see that, you know, the roles of men and women are shared. 
we are there for each other. We're not there on our, by ourselves. You know, we're not there for just for me. It's a partnership that we have to build. And that's one of the things that I taught them. And, and I take great pride in having them be nerds because that means that they don't have money for anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I have another question for the audience. Who here buys their comic books from a comic book store? Who buys their comic books online? Who just borrows from a friend? Yeah. <laughs> now, the reason why I ask that, because I'm also kind of just piggybacking what you're saying. Um, we live, we're living in a wonderful time right now where you can get comic books anywhere. You do not have to go to the comic store. But I actually did go to a comic store. Um, when I first watched Daredevil and saw Electra come out with Evanescence, that was my shining moment of the whole time. <laughs> and so, oh, what? <laughs> so what I did was at the time, I went to UC Santa Cruz. I went over to the comic store, and little old me went up to the counter and was like, I need to know about Electra. <laughs> and he was so awesome. So if you guys are comic book retailers, if you guys share comic books, that is awesome, because guess what? I was there every week. You know what I mean? Up until this other version of Electra. But um, <laughs> I'm very few. A lot of women have had horrible experiences in comic books. I totally understand that, right? One, kudos to you for going to a comic store. Second, you do not have to go to a comic store. Comicsology is great. And second, and third of all, we're at Long Beach Comic Expo. Head down to the artist alley. If you guys want to break this whole thing about the male boy club, there are so many amazing creators down there right now. And they're there putting themselves out of line to create content for you guys and to like expand voices. So a lot of us are pretty much older now, but like, like the wonderful generation. Hello. And not just, <laughs> not just gender yeah. know, breakthroughs, they're, they're, um, they're, um, there's race, there's, there's like different, different yeah. Um, nationalities that have from from and through, and I was amazed to hear about this panel that talked about Latina women having their own comic book called yeah. Inse and Jalisco, yeah. and you know that, what a great thing to happen as a you know I am dabbling in trying to create my own story, yeah. and having what my actual story is um, has changed in the last couple of years thanks to River and other friends that I found. You know um, I yes. knew. I'm new to cosplay. I've only been cosplaying for a couple of years. And I love I love the community. I love how much they share, how empowering they are, and how we can progress the you know future for our children and having them see that, you know, there is a strong base in family and having the family be geeky. Okay. I have Real quick, we have like three minutes oh, left. Okay. So, everybody's social media. Go up and start with Captain Marvel. All right. Oh, uh, I'm on Instagram at Mina Kess. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram at Clara Becca. It's uh, Becca spelled with a C K. It's just my name, my first and last name. I'm very boring. <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram at Hey It's Hawk Guy. Like hot guy, but hot guy. <laughs> and I'm Tony, and my Instagram is Harold of Geek, so it's H E R A L D. But I also do comic book reviews and all that good stuff with um, Fango Nation. So if you guys want to hear more of my opinion, <laughs> there's there. And my Instagram, I'm only going to give you my Instagram because that's the mostly geeky thing that I do. Although I do have Facebook and all of the other stuff. But MLO6451. M L O. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Steampunk Molly. You guys can check her out, it's really awesome. Um, I'm, as I said before, lovely lady, B E E, on Instagram. And because I love all these women who are up there, I'm going to do some plugging for one of them. Captain Marvel on the end. Go down and see her down on the floor. Oh, oh my God. Yes. 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 A3, right? A3. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> yes, okay. and on Facebook, I'm River Alexander Song Cosplayer. Also on Instagram, it's at River Alexander Song. There's I hope you guys had fun, and I hope you guys had fun. Thank you.